AAA Medic Montreal Inc. is a Montreal-based, privately held medical and recreational cultivation and processing cannabis company. It also manufactures cannabis oil and provides product testing and development services. AAA Medic has a 10,000 square foot facility located in Laval, Quebec, and intends to build a second facility in the second half of 2019. I'm joined now by Scott Jardine. He is the CEO of AAA Medic Montreal Inc. Scott, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Scott, let's start with the overview. What does AAA Medic do? Really, we are a Montreal-based cannabis company focused on the extraction and processing market. So it's looking towards Cannabis 2.0, if you will, October 2019, when legalization comes into effect across Canada with respect to edibles, beverages, higher concentrations of concentrates and vapes, mm -hmm. uh, really looking to go after that market. And so we've gathered a core competency of both strategic partners and staff, brought them on board with respect to our team, and that's really what our core competency focus on the uh, consumer packaged goods, mm -hmm. but infused with cannabis. And we're gonna target that, play on the Quebec aspect, of course, and uh, being from a Montrealer from Quebec, Quebec favors domestic production, and it's no different, I would imagine, with the SQDC. Sure. And uh, looking to build that model, start in Quebec, and really be a good Canadian company as well, and branch out from there. Okay, so you're formulating consumer packaged goods for the retail market. Yes, sir. Are you growing your own cannabis? I think in this day and age, especially now, you have to. So mm -hmm. we do have some cultivation sites. We actually just got our industrial outdoor uh, hemp license uh, for uh, some farmland in St. Louis, mm -hmm. which is the St. Lawrence uh, Lower Valley. Yep. And uh, that's 57 hectares of farmland where hmm. we'll be able to grow industrial hemp, extract the CBD oil, refine it further, and then infuse it into a number of different products, whether it be creams, uh, edibles such as gummies or uh, soft gel capsules, sure. uh, beverages as well. CBD and beverages is actually you know, more play in the wellness market. And I think that CBD will probably be much higher in demand, as you can already see from the United States and worldwide, than THC as it stands today. Mm -hmm. THC certainly will come along, but CBD, everybody's grandmother knows about CBD today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay, so then the um, extraction portion of the CBDs. Do you have ex extraction infrastructure and expertise as well? So we definitely have the expertise. Uh, the infrastructure we're building out currently, uh, we're actually doing a capital raise right now towards that end. Uh, we anticipate our facilities will be complete uh, by the end of this calendar year and uh, license, license shortly thereafter. On the extraction side, I think that we're not, without giving away too much, I think one of the distinguishing factors for us, in particular when it comes to the vape pen and concentrates market, is that we're focusing more on the butane extraction, so hydrocarbon, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Canadian uh, producers and extractors, the small uh, pool that exists today, are focused on the CO2 side, and that's more of a medical approach. Uh, but what happens is with CO2, they often end up cutting uh, the, using cutting agents, if you will, for the, for the vape oil and the concentrates. And that's to bring the viscosity down to an acceptable level to be used in vape pens. The beautiful part about butane is that you have a higher concentration of naturally sourced terpenes, uh, usually in the realm of 10, 12, sometimes 15%. And what that affords you is it brings down the viscosity of the vape pen, but has a more complex, fuller taste profile. So if you look at the United States again, uh, in terms of the analytics and statistics, majority of the vape pens and, uh, and concentrates are butane derived in terms of the extraction process. That's something that my group has experience doing. And as of November, I believe Health Canada allowed that uh, to be part of the regime for the, the licensing in terms of what types of methodologies you can use. So we're going to definitely benefit from that, focus on that, put our expertise to work. Um, and the beautiful part is that terpenes add a natural uh, taste profile, if you will, lemon, lime, some cases field berries, versus you know, you, you're very limited with respect to Health Canada regulations where you can't add flavor, you can't add caffeine to certain products. So hmm. that's a benefit of having a, a process that naturally uh, ups the percentage of terpenes in your final product. Right. So is it your expectation that on or about October 27th, you'll be able to have your beverages on shelves in Quebec? Uh, we're, we're working towards that. It, it might be a little tight. I have some kind of uh, plan B scenarios, okay. if you will, to help get us out there. And that's potentially working with some other um, wonderful up and coming Quebec uh, companies that are mm -hmm. uh, slightly ahead of us in the licensing process, but don't necessarily have the expertise to get to the bottom, to, to the finish line, mm -hmm. versus we have a lot of the expertise and are maybe a month or two 
uh, behind October. So potentially by December we could have uh, some products on shelves. In particular, I think the, the one that I brought today, which is a terpene infused beverage that doesn't have any active cannabinoids but will in the future, that particular product is an interesting play. Um, because it doesn't have any active cannabinoids, it can be not only in SQDC in Quebec or OCS approved stores in Ontario, but it could be in your Longos or Shoppers Drug Mart or 7-Eleven right now. Right. It's a zero calorie, zero sugar, uh, carbonated water that just plays on the, the cannabis space. It has, it's, I don't want to say novelty because it's not that, it's, it's certainly better, but what we did is we kind of uh, refined the flavors to take out the sharp notes of that skunky goodness. So it has that undertone and a bit of that taste, but it's just fantastic. And then we mix it in with some of the uh, naturally derived terpenes uh, to mimic some of the genetic strains of cannabis flavors. Okay, so yeah. these products are not infused with any cannabinoids per se. No, we eventually probably will go after C the CBD side more than THC. I think uh, if you look at, again, the, the US as a barometer, um, the beverage market is actually stagnant in terms of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because people don't necessarily want to drink THC, the bioavailability of having that drink in your mouth before it goes down to your liver and converts to Delta 11 THC, it's not long, so you, know, you don't get necessarily a good conversion for THC for that psychoactive uh, reaction if you're looking for that. But on the CBD side, it's a little bit more different. So you know, you're going after a different market segment, it's more the wellness side. So we eventually probably put CBD in these products, but right now, terpenes, you can't talk, you can't really market it so much. There are some health benefits. They're naturally available and you could find them in oranges, you could find them in mangoes and so forth. So what we've done is we infuse that but with an overall uh, cannabis play, if you will, to this particular um, set of beverages. So if you look here, we have this middle beverage here. I don't know if everyone could see. This is what we call original one or OG number one. And I'll, I'll give you a little smell and you'll know right away what I'm talking about. Sure. Oh yeah. And you get a, you get a bit of that skunky goodness. Oh yeah, it yeah. smells like I'd want to spread that on a paper and throw some tobacco in there and fire it up. Yeah, you're not the only one to say that. So <laughs> this is really the, if you will, this is the undertone for all our other beverages. We have a total of three other flavors. I only uh -huh. brought the two kind of the ones that really people go crazy for. And um, this is Kushberry basil here. Okay. Uh, so it's a mix of uh, field berries and strawberries, if I'm not mistaken. No, that's this is strawberry guava here. So this is field berries and it's mixed in. This is the undertone for all the, the flavors. So if you give this one a smell, it's, it's a much more fragrant, fruity flavor by comparison. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll get you we'll get you a little taste test later on. But this this kind of stuff, let me tell you, mix the, mix this one in a mojito, and you're having a good time. Yeah, well, I did I did <laughs> I did taste a couple of them, and I think that uh, you know the flavor is certainly pleasant, and oh, yeah. uh, I could certainly imagine Absolutely. putting some vodka on that on some ice on a hot summer day with some mint, and yeah, well, way this, to go. This is the thing is that you know when you're looking at the cannabis space, uh, we strongly believe in the Pareto principle. So you got 20% making 80% of the purchases, and those are the hardcore cannabis users. So how do you bring new people to market? And this is one way that, first of all, is not limited in terms of a distribution network, but also is an easy transition for people to get used to that skunky goodness, if you will, without going through the psychoactive reaction and whatnot. So right. it's a way to dip your toe in the cannabis market. And uh, from a beverage side, we've just got really good reactions. We're working with, again, local Quebec producers to uh, co-pack. It's our formulations. Uh, we've got some orders, some preliminary orders out of California. We're going to work with with uh, some sales brokers to try and get it in the cannabis related stores because it is a tie into the cannabis market, but again, no active cannabinoids at this time. Right. Yeah. So when the cannabinoids are legal in Canada, will you still have these products that don't have any psychoactive effect? Well, I'm going to say absolutely, yeah. and uh, you know I won't put you on the spot, but these are pretty good. You've tried a yeah, couple yeah. of beverages, so they're pretty good. No, I, I, like think, I think as a standalone, they work, work very well. Yep. If you look at uh, La Croix in terms of the water market, I think it's upwards of $800 million in sales last year or the year before. So the, the beverage market, in particular the carbonated water market, is very interesting. This goes one step further because there's a cannabis play to it. So over and above all the other wide range of products for which we have experience in doing, um, this particular product will be the one that will run in parallel to the cannabis infused version. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, be able to create brand awareness for our company, for Bouquet, which is the brand of the carbonated water, and uh, I think it'll do very well. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Okay, well that's, uh, that's great. Do you think that there's any uh, future in the production of cannabinoids as ingredients from uh, biosynthetic sources above in preference to plant generated sources? You know what, it's very interesting. I, I'd have to say in our uh, experience with the groups that we've talked to, they're a little bit of a ways off, uh, in particular on a commercial scale. 
Um, we're very interested in that. There's some specific cannabinoids that we're looking at that actually ha help um, stabilize your blood sugar level mm -hmm. uh, and also suppress your diet. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you could see the marketing aspects for those particular products, in particular right. in a beverage. Um, so, but the problem is they're very hard and they're in a very limited quantities in the current genetic strains that are out there today. Um, so we were looking into the, the synthetic way of creating these cannabinoids and reproducing them on a more grand scale. Uh, but the problem is, from our again, from our experience in talking to some of these companies, is that they're not quite there yet. They're probably a couple of years off. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, on a commercial scale, how viable will they be? They have to do a lot of tests in terms of um, the cannabinoids, will they have the same effect in interaction with the body based on a synthetic level? And I, from the research that we've done, there's been some adverse effects, if you will, in some cases. Uh, not across the board, I'd say there's some companies that are doing it well, but to scale up has been the problem. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, Scott, that's a great introduction. We'll leave it there for now and come back to you soon. I assume this is going to be a public company at some point? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're looking probably in the next nine months or so to go public. We want to create a liquidity opportunity for our investors who believe in us from day one. Um, my chairman, uh, Renault Adams, uh, uh, who's still very involved in, in the company as a principal shareholder, uh, strongly believes, as do I, in creating uh, value for shareholders. Great. So it's really about heading towards that opportunity. And uh, I think that if you look in nine months' time, you know, facilities completely built out, licensed, uh, potentially generating revenue with a presence not only in Canada, but hopefully in the United States as well, that's a great story to bring to market. You bet. All right, Scott, that's a great story as it is already. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much.